In today's video, I'm going to show you how to plot order book data of a particular coin on Binance Spot Exchange. You can see that it's a live chart and it's updated real time. And you can also interact with the chart. You can zoom in, you can pan around and you can also zoom out. And you can see that it's pretty responsive. So let's see how to build this chart. Now let's look at the structure of data. Starting with bids, the data is a two dimensional array with price as the first information and quantity as the second information. So technically order book is nothing but a collection of price and quantities. Similarly, ask is also an array of price and quantities, but the only difference between the bids and ask is that bids is sorted in descending order, whereas asks is sorted in ascending order. So what it means is that the bids array is going to start here, which is the best price in the order book and go all the way backwards. Whereas the ask array is going to start from here, which is again the best price in the order book and go all the way to the right hand side. All right, now let's look at how to maintain the order book data. So this is the official documentation provided by Binance, but it's not really clear as to how to perform these steps. So let's look at each of the step visually. So first what we do is we initiate a request to the Binance WebSocket that provides changes to the order book information. And then when the WebSocket is initiated, we buffer all the updates that we receive through that WebSocket. And then we initiate a request to get a snapshot of the order book, which gives the complete snapshot of the order book. And you can see that we are storing the updates in a buffer and we kept them in a pending status because we're going to process at a later point in time. And each update is going to have a starting ID and ending ID, which I'll get into later. Once we receive the snapshot and the ID of the snapshot, we're going to discard all the buffered updates with the ID prior to the snapshot ID and process all the ones that are received after the snapshot ID. And then we no longer need the buffer, we just discard it and every subsequent changes received by the WebSocket are processed real time. Now you might wonder why can't we just take a snapshot first and then we listen to the WebSocket and every update that we receive we can process real time. The reason we can't do that is because these are asynchronous requests. So by the time we initiate a request for the snapshot and by the time we get the snapshot, there could be a delay between these two time points and we might miss out on few updates to the order book, which can throw your order book out of sync, which is why we have to do in this particular order. So here are the list of components that we have to build. On the server side, first we need a couple of routes. First one to serve the HTML page and then another one to fetch the order book snapshot. Then we need a WebSocket to connect to the Binance Exchange to get real-time updates of order book changes. And we also need to relay that information back to the client. And to achieve this, we need the following dependencies. First one is Express to create the web server, GOT to handle the API calls, and Socket.io to handle client WebSocket connections, and WS to handle server-side WebSocket connections. Similarly, on the client side, we need to build the UI, and we need to maintain the order book data locally and we need to be able to render the order book chart. And to achieve this, we're going to need D3.js. I'll talk about D3.js later in the video. And we also need socket IO client to handle the web socket from the client side. Now let's start writing the code. First, we'll build server side components. I'm using VS code as my text editor. And first we need to initialize the project by using the command npm init double hyphen y. CLS to clear screen. Now I'm going to install all the dependencies. Create a new file called app.js. Let's import all the modules and create an express server on port 4000. Now let's create the two routes that we need. One to serve HTML pages and the other one to fetch the order book snapshot. To create those routes, create a new folder called routes. Inside that, we are going to have pages.js which will fetch the HTML page and we are going to have another file called serveapi.js which is going to fetch the order book data. Now let's create another folder called utils. Here we are going to create a file called binance.ws.js which we are going to use to handle the WebSocket that we connect to the Binance server to fetch the order book changes. Finally, go back to app.js and import this dependency and also create a socket.io server which we are going to use to handle client-side WebSocket connections. 
Finally, we are going to listen to this event emitter to relay the order book changes to the client. That's it. We are done with the server side of code. Now let's write the client side code. Create a new folder called pages. Inside this folder, create index.html file, index.js and style.css files. In the HTML file, import the dependencies d3.js and socket.io and then create two elements. First one is a select field where we host the symbols that we want to display order book for. I just randomly added three symbols from Binance Spot Exchange. You can just add any, any symbol here. And then we are going to create an SVG element where we are going to host the chart. Go to style.css and paste this styling. This is fairly basic styling. I'm just changing the background color and added some padding and margin. That's it. In the index.js file, first let's create two variables. First one is just a reference to console.log, which I'm going to use often. And then I'm going to create a variable called ob, which is where we're going to store the order book information. So it has bids, asks, and last update ID and we're going to use it to keep the order book up to date and then the symbol for which we have order book displayed and also the buffer. Then we add an event listener on symbol field to send the symbol. Whenever the symbol field is modified, we need to update the server so that we connect to that particular web socket. Then we're going to establish socket connection to the backend server. And then we're going to listen to order book updates topic. Here we're going to handle all the three different functions that we discussed earlier. So first, first when the order book is just initialized, we request for snapshot and we store all the changes in a buffer. And second, as soon as we receive the snapshot, we process all the buffer. And third, once the buffer is completely processed, we process any future updates real time. Finally, let's add a function that can return the order book snapshot for a particular symbol. That's it. With this code, we should now be able to locally store the order book information for the selected symbol on the client side. Now let's talk about visualizing the order book. I'm going to use a library called D3JS to render the chart. And D3JS is a library that allows you to heavily customize your charts and offer you granular control on each and every aspect of the visualization. The downside is that it comes with a learning curve, but I think the trade-off is well worth it. And at some point, if you want to render complex data visualizations, you need a library, flexible library like D3JS. To make it easier for folks who do not know D3JS, I've isolated the data visualization code into a class so that it's isolated and you can use it as a black box. So you don't have to understand how the code is written. You can just use the class in your code and you just have to call the methods to update the data and the data is rendered automatically. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to create a class called order book and I'm going to isolate the data visualization part of the code into the class so that it's easy to use for folks who do not have knowledge on D3JS. So inside this class, we have a constructor and four methods. So first inside the constructor, we're going to pass the bid and ask array, and we're going to initialize all the required information and dependencies. So we're going to have margin to add some spacing, inner spacing, and uh, then we're going to add default the colors. So if you want to customize the colors, you can change this over here. And then we're going to initialize the axis. So X axis, Y axis, and then we're going to have some references to the SVG elements so that we can use them later in the render function to plot the data. Then we're going to have a method called zoom where we're going to apply zooming and panning functionality. Then we're going to have a render method where we're going to render the order book. So we're going to plot nine elements on the chart starting with axis on the X axis. We're going to plot the price scale and on the Y axis side on the right hand side, we're going to plot the order book scale. And on the left hand side, we're going to plot the cumulative order book scale. On the bid side, we're going to plot the cumulative order book and the individual order book values, which you can see in the bright bars. And we're also going to plot a line that outlines the cumulative graph. Similarly, on the ask side, we're going to plot the cumulative graph, the line that outlines the cumulative graph and also the individual order book values. Then we are going to create a destroy method where we delete all the elements and we need this whenever we switch a symbol. So whenever we switch a symbol, we need to delete the previous chart and render the new chart. So we're going to use the destroy function to do that. And finally, we're going to have an update data method where we pass the current values of bid and ask and the data is going to be updated automatically using this method and it's rendered by the rendered function. And finally, to use the class, we're going to create a variable called chart 
every time we receive the snapshot we're going to create a new chart and whenever we change the symbol we're going to destroy the previous chart and finally every time we update the data in the order book we're going to call this update data method all right after completing the coding to start the app you need to run the command node app.js and if you did everything right the bot should start on port 4000 now open the url in browser and you'll be greeted with this interface so you have an option to select the symbol and below that you have the svg where the chart is rendered now when i switch the symbol we should see the chart for that symbol yep it is displayed perfectly you can see that i can pan around or zoom in or zoom out and yeah everything looks good if you are not a programmer but you still like to run the program so here is how to do it first you need to have node.js installed on your system so go to this link and install node.js and after that go to the link in the description box where you can download the repository so click on code and click on download the zip file extract the zip file open this folder in visual studio code if you're not using visual studio code or if you don't have it installed you can go to this folder in command prompt and run the following commands first run npm install to all to install all the dependencies then run the command node app.js to start the program and the program starts on port 4000 then open then open this url in the browser and you should be able to access the code that's it uh, if you want to know more about d3js i suggest you to check out kieran keller's channel he puts out a lot of content on data visualization and his teaching style is also quite engaging and uh, as someone who has immensely benefited from the content that he posted i'm just you know helping spread the word so if you find time if you're interested in data visualization in javascript make sure to check out his channel all right guys that's it uh, stay safe and i'll talk to you guys in the next one bye